Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sabiri 6 Real Estate as well as Remax Realtor Realty Inc. In today's video, I'm gonna actually describe and explain how realtors get paid from rentals and leases. Then I'm gonna explain often how much we get paid from rentals and leases. Lastly, based on the first two explanations, I'm gonna explain how I managed for one month to make upwards of $6,000 just from rentals and leases. This is not really my in my nature to talk about how much I make uh, to strangers or clients or people I know only via acquaintance. Sure, I like most human beings would talk about that to my closest of friends, but it's not my nature to come off as braggadocious in that sense. Thus, I feel a little awkward doing this. All right, so how do realtors get paid from rentals? Let's address this first. If you've watched my uh, other video about how realtors get paid in general from purchase and sale, it's much, much um, like that. Basically, just like how we get paid from purchase and sale, the seller, in this case, the landlord pays both sides, the realtors, and the commission is withdrawn from the deposit. Now with purchase and sale, the deposit is a percentage of the sale price amount. However, with rentals and leases, assuming a year long contract, it's based on the monthly rent. So for instance, if you have a property for rent and I as a tenant want to rent it, my deposit, this is the standard typical thing in where I work, is first and last. So meaning if your property for rent is $2,500 a month, I give you $5,000 because first and last is two months and two times 2,500 is what? $5,000. Me as a tenant, once I submit this deposit, you, the landlord, don't actually get it into your account until the occupancy date, which is the equivalent of the closing date in the purchase and sale example. The occupancy date is the official date where I get to move into the unit. So we might agree to something October 1st, but the occupancy date can be all the way down uh, in let's say November 15th. Thus this deposit of $5,000 is maintained by the listing brokers, the brokerage and the realtor that the landlord has decided to use to list a property for rent. Once the day of occupancy does come, from that $5,000 the commission of the realtor is, is withdrawn and whatever remains is paid to the landlord. Now the standard rate where I work is half a month's rent meaning half a month's rent from the tenant side agent and half a month's rent for the landlord side agent. And once again, 0.5 plus 0.5 is one. So half a month's rent here, half a month's rent there is one month's full rent, meaning of that $5,000, one month's full rent, which in our example is $2,500, is withdrawn and dispersed to the realtors. Hopefully that explains it pretty quickly and pretty efficiently and you guys get the idea. Now, all these things can be negotiated and changed on a case-by-case -case basis, but on average, this is the case. First and last is the deposit. Half a month's rent is the uh, commission amount and commission rate. Deposits more so uh, are movable and a little flexible. Uh, the elastic in a sense where you can negotiate for more upfront uh, and you know, depending on how the dynamics are, are go and are at play, the deposit uh, amount differs. Now, how much do realtors get paid? Well, if I mentioned the standard rate is half a month's rent and ranging on the average rental amount, right? For detached homes, uh, in, at least in the GTA, you can have anything from uh, $2,200 to $35 to $4,000. Once you go south of, or rather north of the $4,000 figure, you're looking at luxury rentals, right? For condos, you start anywhere from the 1600s. And once again, you can go all the way up to the luxury prices. For basement apartments, um, you have something as cheap as 1100 upwards of really, really big, high ceiling, large basements for 2200 in some cases. So assuming half a month's rent as the commission rate and assuming that uh, the landlord is working with the agent and the agent is only working with the landlord and agent is not representing both sides, like I will talk about later in this video, Half a month's rent comes to anywhere about, honestly, uh, you know, six hundred dollars to, uh, you know, in some cases, twenty-five to thirty-five hundred dollars. That's, I would say, I know that's a big gap, but I'm accounting for a lot of variables here, and I would say we make that much from rentals. 
Now talking about myself, unfortunately, okay? Let's move on to that part. Now, how did I manage to make upwards of $6,000 in one month? Now, once again, I wanna clarify that I'm not bragging. I don't make that much from rentals every month uh, in fact, that was the best month I've ever had in terms of rentals and it's pretty, pretty rare and it was a lot of luck involved and in no way, shape or form am I in any sense better than you just because that happened to me once. And a lot of people will be watching this and say, well, no crap, I don't think you're better than me anyways, so you didn't have to clarify that, but still. So the way I managed to make that much was through getting connected with this landlord who had about eight to 10 properties across Toronto. And all these properties uh, came to me vacant. Now, I only in this month worked with the ones that were around $2,000 to $2,700. I didn't work with the $4,000 homes uh, in this one month. Also, I got lucky in the fact that all of them were vacant at the same time. Thus, we were trying to move in tenants in this very month for four properties at the same time. That means if I was successful to get tenants for four properties in that one month, I have four closings that one month. That means four commissions that month. So for one of the properties, the rental amount that we were asking for was $2,300. For that, as a person representing the landlord, I took home $1,150 prior to my cut with the office, obviously. Uh, because I got half a month's rent because I was only the landlord side. Another property we had was for 2,500. Now for this, I represented both sides. I brought in my own tenants while representing the landlord. And what I happened to do was double end the transaction, meaning I got both sides commission, meaning for my rate, I got one month's full rent, which was 2,500. I happened to do this one more time because the people I brought in for the $2,500 property mentioned that they knew of someone who was also looking for a place for rent and this person also wanted something like them. And thankfully, we, me and my client had another property as I mentioned, the third of these four properties. This one we were asking for $2,400 and once again, I was representing both sides and I managed to get $2,400 from this transaction. Now what happened with the fourth property was that I did bring my own tenants one more time and the landlord was okay and we obviously screened these tenants with both sides and what happened was uh, I realized, you know what, for the long run, for my relationship with this landlord and the landlord obviously wanted some sort of discount because she kept on working with me, I took no commission for this transaction. I took zero and hopefully to sow some better uh, good faith in between us. And obviously this was the first time I had worked with her, uh, in any uh, extensive capacity, right? I, I had only known this individual for two months at this point, right? So for this fourth transaction, I took no commission. And I want to end on this note and saying that, look, I had to work really hard this month because when you're representing both sides, all the paperwork is with you all the showings, all the back and forth, all the negotiating, uh, the tenant wants this, the landlord doesn't want this, the landlord wants this, the tenants don't, don't want this. You have to screen the tenants, right? Just because I'm bringing both sides in and I would make more money does not mean I have to put aside my fiduciary and ethical responsibilities and just bring tenants just to make more, right? I had to make sure that, hey, just because I'm bringing these people, are they good people? I had to screen them, I had to ask them questions, interview them. Sometimes it looked like an interrogation, unfortunately. And I had to do a lot of running around, a lot of showings for people that who were not even interested in these properties, just wanted to see them. And uh, you know, it was a lot of work. So it was not just me sitting on my butt signing papers. I had to run around a lot for an entire month to make this happen, just based on rentals. And yeah, that's how I made it happen. Now, now the actual machinations of it, the details about how I advertise, how I managed to get these tenants, all the transactional stuff involved. I've made separate videos about that. I'll make future videos about those details as well. Uh, feel free to watch the old ones and subscribe for the new ones coming up. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe, comment, rate, and review my contact info in the description. Thanks.